Hello friends, welcome to Color Quest. I'm Margaret Bird and my time is winding down here in the incredible city of Urubamba in Peru. If you've been watching, you know that I'm studying here with a dye master to learn about local flora and how it may bring about some incredible colors in the dye pot and trust me, it is. Go back and check out some of those videos. Now, we've been doing some foraging and we were foraging for plants, but when you're out and about and you've got that eye, lots of different things may catch it. And for me, this time I found a man-made item that got me inspired to make a short but sweet video on echo printing. Short and sweet. This little can is going to be what helps us create a fun, hopefully, and nature-inspired echo print today on Color Quest using silk. Let's go check it out. So being here on my residency, I have a few things going on. I am doing quite a bit of experimentation for my own art practice and creating all different kinds of things. I got inspired when I first arrived because of some of the shapes of the leaves here and started doing some echo printing for myself and just because I'm curious more and more about having pattern and so forth within my own artwork. Now, finding this little can and knowing a bit about the tannin iron combo, I couldn't resist. Now, I have silk that's been pre-treated with alum. I made a huge alum bath at the very beginning. Guessed my percentages, you know, you wanna be maybe 10% typically, and I'm okay with it because silk is very forgiving anyway. So. The silk I have here is going to be wrapped around the tin can and the hope is that the iron and the tannin of the leaves I choose will interact and give an enhancement to the print itself. All experimentation, there is little science there. You can go back, I have a few videos on echo printing where iron is part of the mix and I really love the effect. So I'm going to start putting it together. So here are my supplies. I am going to be using chilco leaves because it's so abundant here and I've done quite a bit of dyeing with it. I thought it would be fun to see what these leaves might bring in terms of an echo print. I have my silk and as I mentioned, it's been pre-treated with alum. I have my foraged tin can that I found that's already beautifully rusted. And this is two inch ribbon, so it should fit just perfectly on there. I have my string, which is what I'm going to bind with. And then I also have a plastic bag. Now this is used and I'm going to be cutting this into a shape that will allow me to have a barrier so that we can try to avoid having ghost prints or printing back on itself. I'd love to roll this quite a few times around this can and see what comes up with. So I'm going to wet this fiber to stretch it out and just to allow it to be easier to work with. And then we will start designing our print with the choco leaf.
you again, Phyllis, for helping me film. I have the can all rolled up. You'll notice that I put the silk on top of the plastic and the plastic is a barrier. And that's purely because I would like to try to get a very clean print. Of course, you don't have to do that, but now I have my bundle. Remember, you really have to do it super tight. That's critically important. And I'm going to go set up my steam bath here, which I have a little system. It's not with a steamer, but it works. And we'll go put this in. We're gonna steam this instead of putting it in water because if you submerge it in water, which you can do, you will just have the fiber getting wet and therefore the print can bleed and become a little bit more like a watercolor, which can be beautiful. But I wanna see if I can get more of a crisp print this way. So I'll go set up the steamer. All right, next day, I steamed it for maybe an hour and a half, but I made a little bit of a mistake and I wanted to share that with you. And that is that I allowed, without realizing it, the water boiled off. And so I actually, <laughs> the plastic melted. So do as I say, not as I do. Always watch your steam water. Make sure you have enough water in there. Silly thing. Hopefully it didn't do any damage to the silk, but let's unravel and see. Okay, so that turned out differently than I thought, but also not. And you could really see how actually putting that plastic in there protected it so much that only the layer that was actually touching the tin can had that really dark effect. But I wanna show you something that I did, and that is that I decided to put the other end into an iron bath. I didn't film it, but I thought it might be interesting to see what that does and how that looks, so you can get an idea. Here is the piece that was touching the tin can. So you've got a really nice shadow, and I really like the effect, personally. I think it's pretty. It's got the yellow coming through and a little bit of these dots, which has got to be from the can itself. And these pieces, which were in the very beginning, were more muted than these pieces. But I like the effect. Now, further up, you can see that the Chilka print is extremely light. I believe more of the color actually bled into the silk, but it's visible, but super light. And then here's the greens. So then this is the piece that I put into iron water. And again, very, very light. I don't even know if you can see it in the camera, but it was a good, fun experiment. This is a pretty small can and I think maybe if I were to try it again, I would either just do it for a very small piece of something or I would in fact not use the plastic and maybe more of this rust would come through and introduce itself onto the fiber itself. But now I just have this really fun <laughs> long piece of silk 
that has three different prints on it. So nothing ventured, nothing gained, always worth an experimentation. I want to tell you that the reason why I decided to try Chilka is because, first of all, it made a beautiful color in the dye pot, but also because on my own, to my own investigation and things, I have actually done quite a few different echo prints while I've been here using Chilka. And I thought it might be fun for you to see what Chilka can look like in different environments. And just do a quick, little run through so you can see because I did capture much more vivid prints when I did it with some other types of echo print process. So I'm going to show this to you now. So one of the echo prints that I did was just a straight echo print. This is a piece of wool and then I put the chilka leaves out on it and you can see they're quite yellow. This was probably the one I liked the most in terms of the print itself and this was on silk and I simply rolled these on top of a piece of PVC, put a piece of plastic over the top and you can see that the print was pretty specific. Here there was a little bit of iron and so you can see that outline there. So this is one of the prints. And then let's see down here, it got a lot brighter. Um, I'm not quite sure. I think this part got into the water and then spread it out a little bit. So that was one. Now another one I did with Chilka, I did an iron blanket. So here, this is silk. I soaked this in tannin. I laid out the Chilka leaves. And then I put this as an iron blanket over the top. You can see the ghost print here. I actually really like that. It's very subtle. But this piece, I think, turned out really pretty. So you can see the iron turned this into this sort of pretty bluish purple. And with the contrast with the leaves of the choka, I think that one was really nice. And finally, here's the third one that I tried with Chilka. And this is with a dye blanket using cochineal as the transfer dye. So again, silk. This was, I believe, more than in just alum. You can see how vibrant the leaves came out, the yellow of the leaves against that pink. And then this was the blanket of cochineal. And, you know, it doesn't hold on to that cochineal, but you can still get some ghost print that I really like. It's very subtle. And I like the two actually together. I think they look really nice as a pair. So those are some of the experiments I had been doing, which got me intrigued about doing the cam. If you want to see videos on how to do the iron blanket and how to do the cochineal blanket or a dye blanket. There are two videos from last summer, 2021, that goes through that process step by step. So you can watch that. There's also a video about using a tin can and that's older. I don't have the date. You'll have to go back and look. And you can see how that can look different on paper. I also did a small silk piece on that. I'm gonna explore that a lot more. I like that effect and um, I think it's worth trying. So anyway, there you go. If you see something, try it out. Piques your curiosity, run with it. I thought it was a great experiment and it pushed me to go a little bit further and try a couple different things. It's that curiosity, really important. All right, I have one more week here. And I can't even begin to explain how magical it's been. Now, next week on Color Quest, because I've been so interested and inspired by this echo printing, I want to do a little bit more. And maybe we mix it up a little bit and we toss in some paper. What do you think about that? So I hope you'll join me 
my last week here in Peru on my artist residency and see if some of these leaves, choca, why not? We'll throw that in. Maybe a little eucalyptus. I've been really inspired by that. Throw those in to an echo print scenario with paper. I hope to see you next week. Thanks for joining me on this incredible time here in this natural color heaven on earth known as Peru. Have a great week. Now I want to share with you that my glasses are really sunglassy. It's getting really bright in here in the afternoon sun and so my glasses are turning to sunglasses. So 